I'm in the Venice of the North, and we are about to take a bite out of the Dutch capital. With 165 canals, 90 islands, and 1,500 bridges, Amsterdam is the wateriest city in the world, surpassing even Venice. Welcome to Amsterdam. To start the day, I made my way to Landskroon Bakery. Landskroon is a historic bakery where you'll find the most delicious Dutch bakery and sweets. And of course, the infamous Stroopwafel. Fresh out of the oven, huh? They're gorgeous, and the color is so beautiful. And while I wanted to try everything in the case, I settled on two traditional Dutch items the bakery is known for. The Olibal, or Olibolen, and Stroopwafel. Well, that's another one I have to try. <laughs> yes, I'll give you one. <laughs> Thank you. Olibolen is traditionally enjoyed in Amsterdam around New Year's, and it is the most delicious ball of fried dough with rum, raisins, and sugar. Think of it as a Dutch donut. Mm -mm. Next, I tried the Stroopwafel, made of two waffle cookies, sandwiching a dark molasses-like caramel syrup. That's good. For a closer look, I headed downstairs to the kitchen. Good morning. And this is one tiny kitchen. But as my mother always told me, it's not the size of the kitchen that matters, it's what comes out of it. And Landskroon Bakery proves just that. Let's put an plug in. Just uh, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> not like supposed. That was pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to do that. <laughs> it will not come out so good. <laughs> no, it, it, it was a little bit uh, <laughs> go wrong. Like yeah. From rolling out dough to piping and cutting, I got a first-hand look at how some traditional Dutch cookies are made. This is a gefilled koek. We call it a filled cookie. And this is uh, with almond paste inside. It is yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. I just want to like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now it's time to put the almond cookie to the test. Incredible. Mm, very, very good, Bosch. <laughs> Thank you. For my next stop, I headed to Cutthroat Barber, a revolutionary concept that combines a vintage barber shop, restaurant, and cocktail bar all in one. Well, how about we start with a uh, cocktail? Yeah, man. I'm definitely my favorite here is the grassroots. Okay. So it's, um, it's melon liqueur, vodka, kiwi fruit, and a bit of apple juice on top just to okay. finish it off. And if that wasn't cool enough, Cutthroat is located in the very first stock exchange in the world where you can even watch the ticker go by while getting your cut. These boys, they get a discount with us, so they come down most nights of the week, have a few cheap beers, and you know, create a good environment down here. So They're yeah, making all kinds of money. They don't oh, need yeah, a discount. Cool. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> be sure to call ahead for your haircut, and be sure to hit the bar first. Mm. That's good. So what do you think? Well, it's quite short at the back already, okay. and the sides. I would do a, like a mid-fade. It was then onto my haircut and shave. All right, let's do this. Like I say, man, like I say, man. Always, said always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather. You're welcome, man. Awesome. Good You're job. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. You're welcome. Cheers, man. Now that I had my new do, it was time for lunch. I tried three house specialties. First, the red velvet chicken and waffles, a sinfully sweet and savory combination of red velvet waffles, crispy juicy fried chicken, buttery fried plantains, and bacon with rum syrup and powdered sugar. Banana, bacon, syrup, waffle, out of control good. Next, the man bun extra large burger, huge, juicy, and with a big fried onion ring, bacon, and cheese. Oh, mm, I'm getting a muscle spasm. <laughs> this is not a burger for the weak at heart. The man bun. 
lives up to its name. Excellent, excellent burger. Finally, the best huevos rancheros I've ever had. A crispy tortilla topped with perfectly poached eggs, fried chicken tenders, shoestring carrots, jalapenos, guac, tomato salsa, and fresh squeezed lime juice. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Lunch was amazing. I'm gonna need a nap yeah. after this. I'm gonna have to sit down. <laughs> and now it's time to walk it off. For a look at Amsterdam's craft brewery scene, I headed to Brouwerij Taya. Located in a former bathhouse next to the famous de Goyer windmill, the tallest windmill in the Netherlands, Brouwerij Taya is where you want to go to taste some of Amsterdam's finest craft brews. To get a closer look, I met with owner Patrick Hendrikse at the manufacturing facility. And our tour begins in the most important room of the plant, the lab. Hi. Nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you. These guys are from an inspection. They're... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're shutting this place Yeah. Down. This is the oh. science. Yeah, the brains. What's this machine over here? This is a copier. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we, we, we use it only to measure the bitterness of the beers. Okay. This is pretty cool. Look at this. <laughs> From the lab, it was on to the malt. We have organic malts or non-organic. Okay. And of course, Pilton or Cara or roast or uh, wheat. Okay. So we have different sorts. So they just put the bottles in and then they get filtered into the line. It was now time to smell and taste the hops. There you go. Cheers. We're pretty, uh, of IPA because it's pretty strong in hops, whereas most IPAs are really subtle and uh, balanced. We, we kind of wow. kick in the door for Dutch standards. It's really right? good. Yeah. What is going on in this tank here, huh? Uh, here we're separating the warts, so the, the, the fluids, from the, the malts. Uh, we call it bustel, uh, you call it spent grains. We then made our way down the street to the brewery. So the brewery okay. is now located in an old bathhouse. So, really? Yeah, so people can have a hot shower. So for 10 cents, if you see our entrance, it has men and women in Dutch, of course. It would have a, 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 a waiting room. And you, so you pay 10 cents, you would get a ticket. You would say, oh, ticket 21. And you would go and you have 10 minutes to shower with a hot shower uh, in, in this bathhouse. So there are different bathhouses located uh, throughout the area, throughout, throughout Amsterdam. <clears throat> These are the two entrances I was talking about. So we take the men. Okay. The brewery and beer garden is always packed, so come early. This is the uh, Eiwit that we're drinking. Um, it used to be our summer special. It's our wheat beer. Uh, but nowadays, people drink it all, all year round, even in the winter. And this is my kind of brewery with meats and cheeses to enjoy alongside the beer, the perfect place to spend an evening in Amsterdam. The cheese is uh, made by a farmer Alex, brewer Alex we call him. He uh, has a sheep farm in the north of Amsterdam. And every day he comes and picks up the spent grains from this brewery and the other brewery. Okay. And he feeds the spent grains to his sheep. And he milks the sheep. And, and from the milk he makes the cheese. this cheese. And it's a pretty sophisticated cheese. Well, I want to thank you, Patrick, for an incredible afternoon. Me learning a little bit more about beer. You've got quite, uh, quite an outfit going on here, really. Yeah, that's amazing. It's only water, it's either sick or swim. Can't hold back your light and expect to win. Gotta go harder, oh, you've gotta learn. Don't suppress your fire, baby, let it burn. Switching gears from beer, I headed to Vesper in the Jordan neighborhood to check out the hottest cocktail bar in Amsterdam. 
And this is my kind of place, dimly lit with amber lighting and serious cocktails. Vesper takes its name from James Bond's infamous martini, the Vesper. To learn more about Vesper, I met with creative director Julian Bayuni. Very focused on local produce, mm -hmm. local spirits, or stuff that we're crafting ourselves. And this award-winning bar also comes with a conscious, focusing on environmental sustainability, like replacing plastic straws with bamboo and incorporating a zero waste approach to drastically reduce the amount of waste a bar typically produces. After my sip of rye, I chose the Godzilla. This is that boy here. Wow. It's Godzilla. So I, got, I guess the, uh, you know, the big green giant bottle is the reference also. There we go. Wow. Oh my gosh. And now that's the batch, right? This batch done. You're just, you're just gonna. It's you're not gonna... straight tangere. <laughs> no man, it's the batch. It's all good to go. We just we give we give a little seasoning with some absinthe. Mm. Oh, I love that. Helps the herbal flavors come out, but um, yeah, tank retain oh. gin, bit of tequila in there. Clean, smooth, wow. and very relaxing. You lucky? I likey. Cool. Very much. For the next libation, a winter spice and pear cocktail called the Gold Frankincense and Mirth. And this is one beautifully crafted cocktail, starting with brandy, manzanilla cherry, fresh pear, a honey apple cider vinegar infusion with cardamom and turmeric, some Venezuelan frankincense bitters, and then it's all about the shake. Strain and top with the gold rose bees pollen. This is the myrrh element. You got the gold, you got the frankincense in there, and then this is the myrrh. With the incense. With the incense, How yeah. How beautiful. It has this calming effect, you know, obviously incense is like meditate. <laughs> wow. The honey going on there with the spice, yeah. The honey and the bite of the spice, it's so smooth. Julian, you are <laughs> quite the artist here with the cocktails. Well, thank you. This Mark. is incredible. Yeah, it's my, I guess my pro probably my favorite taste-wise on the menu as well. Excellent. <laughs>